Hello everybody, getting ready to do lesson 3.2 part 2 today of Algebra 2 Math. Part 3 is available here as well as all of your course materials. Email me and I'll get those out to you. Today 3.2 Applying Properties of Rational Exponents Part 2. Here is our objective. We have five points here of note taking today. And then we have 24 points here of classwork on our classwork sheet today. If you don't have a classwork sheet, you should email me to page one of your classwork sheet, properties of radicals. The third and sixth properties can be expressed using radical notation when m equals 1 over n for some integer n greater than 1. Okay, so what are we talking about there? Properties of radicals. Product properties of radicals quotient property of radicals then we have this uh, is a product property here of radicals the nth root of a times b is the same thing as the nth root of a times the nth root of b and then the quotient property of radicals uh, the nth uh, root of a over b would equal the nth root of a over the nth root of b okay well let's get into some of this using properties of radicals. Use properties of radicals. Simplify this expression here. So it will be the same thing as this. We could multiply 12 times 18 to get this number here, which is 216. The third root of 216 would equal 6. And we use the product property to get that one. And then we have um, the fourth root of 80 over the fourth root of 5. And that would be the same thing as the fourth root of 80 over 5, which would be the fourth root of 16, which equals 2. And that's the quotient property of radicals. Let's try a guide of practice now. Students, this is yours down here. Let's get into our property of radicals. Simplify the expression here. Fourth root of 27 times the fourth root of 3. So we just multiply these two together. 4 through to 27 times 3 would be the 4 through to 81, which is 3. So that would be how we would arrive at that using our product property of radicals. A radical with index n is in simplest form if the radicand has no perfect nth powers as factors and any denominator has been rationalized. This is classwork page 4 on your classwork sheet. Okay, students, in your own words, define simplest form in your own words. And this is on your notebook. Make sure you make sure it's in 3.2, part 2, page 5 of uh, your uh, classwork uh, time. Mark that in your notebook, date it. So when I do my notebook checks, when I teach this in the classroom on Fridays, to make sure my students are taking notes. The teachers, it's up to you on how you want to do that. Write the expression in simplest form. We have this situation here. <clears throat> the third root of 135. So we can factor this out. We can, we can another way of, a, of getting a third root of 135 is to factor our radicand here, factor out a perfect cube, now we got a perfect cube here, and then the third root of 5, so we have 3 times the third root of 5. That'd be a way of doing it without a calculator if you don't want a precise number. Write radicals in simplest form. So we have this situation here, the fifth root of 7 over the fifth root of 8. So uh, we can make a denominator a perfect fifth power. So now we can make our denominator to rationalize our denominator. 32 is a what does have a perfect uh, fifth root. So the fifth root of 32 over the fifth root of 28. And that'd be the fifth root of 28 over 2. That'd be another way of doing it. That'd be a way of rationalizing our denominator here without a calculator. Okay, so let's do our guided practice here. 6 root 256. We'll do that one. Students, this is yours down here. So let's try our guide of practice here. Write the expression in simplest form. We have 6 root of 64 times 4. So this is a perfect, this has a perfect 6 root here. This does not. So we have 2 times the 6 root of 4 will be a way of doing this uh, using radicals instead of using a calculator. 
And that is uh, 3.2 part 2. Part 3 is available here as well as all the rest of the Algebra 2. Thank you very much.